fire. Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. young fellow you just heard selling his papers is Tommy Woodruff. There's quite a story involved in his young life, a story of love, understanding, and the close walk with the Lord. Tommy set the whole town of Naughty Pie in a fire with his problem. Everyone was interested in him because Tommy quite unconsciously lives a very real and practical Christian life. But say, this isn't getting into our story, is it? This is the story, A Lesson in Love. Let's go over to the Naughty Pine Grammar School and listen to a certain young man tell his classmates a story. This young fellow has the reputation of being the best storyteller in the school. And there they were, all lined up, ready to fight each other. God's people on one side and the Philistines on the other. And they stood there looking at each other and trying to decide how to get the jump on the other guy. And suddenly, a great big man stepped forward from the enemy's army. You know who he was? A giant Goliath. He looked terrible and tough, and he was covered from head to foot with armor, and he carried a big sword that would take two regular-sized guys to swing it. And God's people shook with terror when they saw the giant. They didn't have anybody that could fight him until David stepped up, and he says, I'll fight him. Well, Goliath laughed and roared. You could hear him for a mile. But but David wasn't scared, not a bit. He knew the Lord was going to help him. The king offered to let David use his armor, but he didn't even want it. Instead, he picked five good stones for his slingshot, and then he went out to meet Goliath. And the big man laughed when he saw him. And he made fun of God's people for sending a boy out to fight him. <laughs> but suddenly, David began whirling the slingshot around over his head. He made it go faster and faster and faster till he let one of the straight go and then powie! The stone hit Goliath right between the eyes and he fell down dead in a doornail. The Philistines took off in retreat. And God's people won the battle. Oh, hey. 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 That was a good story, Tommy. Oh, Why thank you, it? Tommy, for that wonderful story. I'm sure we all enjoyed it. Was it was wonderful. Oh. Was it now yeah. we'll have to go back to our books. Yeah. After school is out, I'd like to see you, Tommy. Yes, ma'am. You needn't worry about it. Just want to ask you a few questions. This isn't discipline. All right, class. Turn to your workbooks and we'll get started. <laughs> wanted to see me, Miss Amy? Yes, Tommy. Um, where do you get your Bible stories? From my grandpa. You live with him, don't you? Yes, ma'am. Since my mother and father are both dead. Your grandfather must be a wonderful man. Oh, yes, he is. I, I learned a lot of the Bible from him, Miss Amy. He, He makes it terrific. When he tells me Bible stories, it makes me wish I lived in the olden days. Old days, not olden days, Tommy. Yes, sir. I um, would like to meet your grandfather. He must be a wonderful man. He sure is, Miss Amy. You you could stop by any time, and he'll be glad to see you. Oh, thank you. I will pay a visit someday soon. Um... It's uh, getting late, and uh, I I have to deliver groceries for Mr. Bodkin and then sell my papers. 
Oh, I'm sorry, Tommy. You go right along. I hope I haven't kept you. Oh, no, ma'am, you haven't. I, I still got time to get to the grocery store. Bye. Goodbye, Tommy. <laughs> Ten minutes late, young man. Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Bodkin. I'll make it up. Well, you'd better. A fine businessman you'd make not getting your work done on time. Oh, yes, sir. I'll try real hard to do better. Tommy, don't you ever get angry at anybody for anything? No, Mr. Bodkin. Jesus wouldn't like it if I did. Jesus wants me to be cheerful and polite always. I thought that's what you'd say. Now, here are the orders to be delivered. You'd better run along so you can get back in time to sell your papers. All right, Mr. Bodkin. I'll load up my bike and get going. What's the big idea of ringing the doorbell? Can't you read the sign that says I'm sleeping? I'm sorry, sir. I don't see any sign. What? Oh, I guess I didn't put it up. What do you want, kid? Well, here are the groceries from Godkin's store. Land sakes, what kind of pork chops are these, young man? Oh, aren't they nice, ma'am? Nice? I wouldn't feed them to my dog. Now, you take them back and bring some more, so I'll have them in time for supper. You ought to know better. Oh, yes, ma'am. Uh, we'll try to do better next time. Are you still working at this hour, Tom Woodruff? Oh, yes, ma'am. I work this late every day, Mrs. Bixby. And then you sell papers after you're through this job. Well, yes, ma'am. I love to do it. It helps make Grandpa's pension check last longer. Extra! Extra! Read all about it! The United Nations opens big debate on world prices! Get your evening paper here! Extra! How's your favorite newsboy tonight? Oh, I'm just fine, Pat. Thank you, mister. How are you, Officer O'Rourke? Oh, Officer O'Rourke, is it? Getting kind of formal with your old pal, aren't you, my boy? <laughs> Thank you, mister. I'm just joking, Pat. What's wrong with you, laddie? You're not smiling quite as big a smile as you usually do. Oh, it's all right. I'll be okay. Oh, come on now, Tommy boy. I have five stalwart lads of my own, and they've always seen fit to tell their problems to their old Irish father. Well, it's... It's Mrs. Bixby. Oh, and what's wrong with that old biddy? I oh, oughtn't to call her that, Pat. She, she's a nice elderly lady, and I'm sure she means well. Means well about what, son? Well, she's always telling me I shouldn't be working like I do. She doesn't like my clothes, and she keeps telling me she's going to see to it that I get a good home. Hmm. Well, don't bother your smiling heart with the likes of her, Tommy. She's meaning well, and I'm sure she hasn't anything better to do than keep her eye on you. But you let me know if she gets out of hand. Well, thanks, Pat, but I don't like to tell Grandpa about this. He'd only worry, you know. Sure, and that's using your head. Do you feel better now? I sure do. I was feeling kind of bad, but now I'm cheered up. Thanks a million, Pat. Extra, extra, read on. So I hear it, Tommy. Uh, uh, what's new? Uh, nothing today. How was school? Oh, fine. Miss Amy said she's coming over to see us someday. Well, that'll be nice. You'd better wash up now. Supper's about ready. Okay. I'll be back in a jiffy. What's the matter, Tommy? Uh, what part of the Bible are we going to read tonight? Oh, oh, I've got a portion of the New Testament picked for tonight. Where it tells about Jesus healing the sick and the blind, and also when he talks with Nicodemus. Oh, boy, that sounds great. Tom. Yes, sir? You'll have to do your schoolwork, too. Oh, sure. Business before pleasure. <laughs> Hello, 
this is Judge Harper. Judge, this is Mrs. Bixby. Oh, yes. Uh, how are you today, Mrs. Bixby? Well, it all depends how a person looks at things, Judge Harper. My health is good, but my heart is heavy. Oh, is that right? Oh, it most certainly is. Every time I think of that poor Woodruff child, my heart is heavy. Working all hours of the day and night, living in a shack, not having any parental guidance, I think it's high time we stepped into the picture. Well, now, just a minute. Uh, this is serious. Are you sure things are as you say they are? <laughs> If you think for one moment that I spend my day fabricating stories about overworked and ill-kept children, you're sadly mistaken, Julius Harper. That boy is ten years old, and I dare say that he hasn't had a day's happiness in his life. Hmm. Does the boy appear to be unhappy? Well, no, not on the surface. He's always smiling and singing Sunday school songs, and he's very pleasant and polite. But that's only on the surface. All right, Mrs. Bixby. I'll drop by in the morning and we'll drive to the boys' home and take a look. Goodbye. I'll be ready in a minute, Gramps. All right. Ready for inspection, sir. Made a clean scrub down from stem to stern. Put on clean PJs and my bed is ready. <laughs> well, that's a fine report. Uh, now, make yourself comfortable here and we'll start our Bible reading in the third chapter of Mark, the uh, seventh verse. <clears throat> uh, but Jesus withdrew himself with his disciples to the sea. And a great multitude followed him. Tommy, if you went out to the mission field today, you'd find that the missionaries not only bring in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, but they also teach the people how to farm and how to take care of the sick. Missionary nurses play two parts. They preach and teach the gospel, and they help the doctors care for the sick. That's wonderful, Gramps. <laughs> I see the Sandman's rapidly closing your eyes. Yeah. Let's have our prayer before you fall asleep. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank thee for this day's blessings. We praise thee for the Lord Jesus Christ and his saving power. Bless Tommy. Make him a fine, true Christian lad. And Lord, help me. To, to mold his young life according to thy will. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, son, off to bed. Well, I guess I am kind of tired. Night, Gramps. <laughs> Good night. Sleep tight, little fella. Thy Lord watcheth over thee. Come in, please. The door is open. Why, Judge Harper and Mrs. Bixby. Well, won't you sit down, please? Thank you, Mr. Woodruff. Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't meet you at the door, but uh, my leg's been acting up today. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. I hope you won't be laid up long. Uh, thank you. It always passes over in a day or two. Uh, who does the housework when you're in this condition, Mr. Woodruff? Well, uh, Tommy does the legwork, but I do the chores that can be done sitting down. I see. Judge Harper, this just goes to show you that I'm right. Uh, perhaps. Uh, right about what, Mrs. Bixby? Well, um... Well, that you're not fit to give Tommy the kind of home he needs and deserves. What did you say? I said that you're not giving the boy what he should have. His clothes aren't good, this shack is worse, and you're not able to take care of him. Instead, you've got a ten-year-old boy taking care of you and working all hours of the day and night. 
Is this why you're here, Judge Harper? To see for yourself? Yes, Mr. Woodruff. That's why I'm here. Well, Tommy's clothes ain't the newest, I'll agree. But they're warm and clean and neat. This home of ours ain't the best as far as buildings go because it's old. But it's a decent shelter. Yes, I'm an old man, too, but my health is good. Except for my bad leg, which acts up periodically. And Tommy's an ambitious boy. And I believe that his business enterprise is doing more good than harm. He also gets in a fair share of boyish fun to boot. I'll also admit that the money he earns does help stretch out my modest monthly pension. However, he'll be repaid when I pass on because I have a life insurance policy naming him as beneficiary. Well, that may all be very good, but the boy needs a normal home and good clothes and something he can be proud of. And now that your health is going bad, you're not able to take care of the poor child. Well, Judge, aren't you going to say anything? Tell the man he's got to give up the boy for the boy's good. <clears throat> Where do you intend to find a home for Tommy, Mrs. Bixby? Why, a naughty pine orphanage. They raise fine children there, and they get all the comforts of home. You, you'd take Tommy away from me and put him in an orphanage where he wouldn't get the love he gets from me? Love doesn't put food in his stomach and clothes on his back. Well, Judge, I think we have a good case. Will you order the boy away from this bad environment? Well, it's not as easy as all that. Thank you, Mr. Woodruff, for letting us visit you. Well, we must go now. It, it's all right, Judge. I just hope you take everything into consideration. Goodbye, sir. Mrs. Bixby. Good day. <laughs> You go sit down and rest your leg. Well, that's all right, son. I'll finish the dishes. You go along and do your homework. What's wrong, Gramps? What's wrong with you? Oh, I, I guess I'd better tell you before you hear it from other places. Hear what? Mrs. Bixby was here today with Judge Harper. She was? What did they want? Well, it ain't good news... They want to take you away from me. Oh, I knew she was up to no good, that old busybody. I won't go. They can't make me go. No, son, calm down. Remember, the Lord's still running the universe, and he knows all about our problems. Oh, I'm sorry, Gramps. Sure, I, I know everything will be okay. He won't let anybody break up our home. That's right. We'll pray about it. Tommy, what's wrong? You're not the same boy you used to be. Oh, I'm all right, Miss Amy. I, I just got a problem. Tommy, you delivered the orders wrong again today. What's wrong, son? I'll try to do better, Mr. Bodkin. Say now, Tommy, me boy, how does your smile? Oh, I'm sorry, Pat. I, I guess I shouldn't lose my smile. Huh? Hey, you, pull over to the curb. Oh, I wasn't violating the law, Pat. What's wrong? I'm sorry to give you a scare, Mr. Bodkin. It's not you that's wrong. When I saw you go, boy, I got an idea flashed into me Irish brain. Oh, Pat. What in the name of common sense are you talking about? Tommy Woodruff, that's what. Oh, so you've noticed it too. Aye, and a man would have to be stone blind not to see the change that's come over the lad. What do you make of it? I don't know. He's carrying a terrible problem. He won't tell a living soul. You're telling me. He keeps his mouth closed tighter than a sea clam's jaws. I just wonder if all this extra work he does is too much for him. Perhaps his grandfather can't take care of him anymore. Ah, and uh, you might have something there. But if it's true, then the boy should be put into a good home.
Bill, are you busy? <laughs> Always, Miss Amy. <laughs> Don't let that stop you from coming in. <laughs> Please have a chair. Oh, thanks. Now, what brings Naughty Pine's number one teacher to Ranger headquarters? You. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Well, I must say this is unusual. Why me? What have I done? Nothing. Bill, I've come to you for help. I'm listening. Tommy Woodruff's in trouble. Better, I should say, that both he and his grandfather have a tremendous problem. It all started when Tommy began delivering letters. Furthermore, I think Mrs. Bixby is going to make good her threat. And we don't know yet how Judge Harper feels about this. I visited Tommy and his grandfather this afternoon right after school. In fact, I walked the boy home. Bill, Mr. Woodruff's a wonderful man. He's as close as I can imagine a real saint of God to be. And, and this thing is wrecking both of them, absolutely ruining them. I can well understand that. Will you help, please? I certainly will. I'll do everything I can to block Mrs. Bixby. She's wrong, as wrong as a person can be. Oh, thank you. I'm... I'm sick about this myself. If that busybody breaks up that home, it'll be a crime, a terrible crime. Bill, I got bad news. Tommy's in the hospital. Hospital? When, Mr. Woodruff? He went early this morning. Well, what's wrong? What happened? Well, after Miss Amy left, Tommy complained that he had trouble with his left eye. Mm -hmm. I called the doctor, and the boy was rushed to the hospital right in the doctor's car. He... Well, he may lose the sight of one or both eyes. Oh, no. Well, what I have to say won't be much comfort to you now. But I came to tell you that I'm on your side in this fracas with Mrs. Bixby. Miss Amy talked to me early this evening. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. But, Bill, Mrs. Bixby seems to far removed now. Why, I'd gladly give the boy up if only the Lord would see fit to save his sight. You really love him that much? I don't count, Bill. Do all you can for Tommy, but... Forget about me. Mr. Woodruff, I'm going to do all I can for the boy and for you, too. Let's get to the hospital. Well, good morning, Mrs. Bigby. What can I sell you today? Uh, groceries aren't the most important thing at this moment, Mr. Bodkin. I suppose you know Tommy's in the hospital. Yes, I'm very sorry to hear it. I wonder what brought the sickness on. Neglect. Mr. Bodkin, criminal neglect of a child. You know, Pat O'Rourke and I were talking about that. Well, the whole town's going to be talking about it before I'm through. It's a shame to neglect a boy the way that lad's been treated. Well, can't he be put in a good home? Yes, but it'll take the people of the town to do it. What do you mean? I mean we should get up a petition to Judge Harper and get some action in this case. This is a private room, Mr. Woodruff. You can come and go as you please. A small bed will be brought in here for you to sleep on if you wish to do so. Tommy will be down from the examining room in half an hour or so. Oh, well, I'm very grateful for your kindness. You've given me a, a great deal of comfort. The Lord has strengthened me in this very trying time by your help. Bill, may I see you, please? Uh, yes, Henry, I'll be right there. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Woodruff. <laughs> sure, Bill, we'll see you later. What's wrong, pal? Uh, Amy's got some bad news. Hmm? Oh, Bill, everything's turning for the worse. What do you mean? Well, Mrs. Bixby's got the whole town in an uproar. She's getting petitions signed, and Tommy's sickness has been the oil she needed to pour on the fire. I'll say. Why even men like Pat O'Rourke and Mr. Bodkin believe her lies? Hmm, I see. This is serious. Henry, get Stumpy and Grey Wolf. Tell them to guard Tommy's room. No one is to be let in there except the right people. I'll take full responsibility for this action. Okay. 
Are you going to see Judge Harper now? You said it. Now you have the other side of the story, Judge Harper. Yes, Bill. You're well aware that I can't sign with either party in this fracas. Yes, sir, I am. But may I ask, will you accept a wire recording in your court? Yes. Well, I won't be able to enter it as legal evidence. Will you allow me to speak on behalf of the boy? Why, sure, Bill. Won't the attorney for the plaintiff object to this? I don't think so. Well, let's cross that bridge when we come to it, huh? See you at the hearing. Yes, sir, you most certainly will. I have read the petitions presented to this court and find them to be in good order. Now, I'll hear the defense counsel, Mr. Bill Jefferson. Your Honor, I would like to ask you to listen to a wire recording of a conversation between Tommy and his grandfather. I object. Objection overruled. May I point out to the court that this is a most irregular proceeding? And this is a most irregular case, my dear fellow. You may proceed, Mr. Jefferson. Thank you, sir. Here is the recording. Tommy, I wish with all my heart that I was in your place. Please, don't become bitter about losing your eye. Don't blame the Lord. And, and look, son, don't be angry at Mrs. Bixby. Well, I'm not, Gramps. You taught me better than that. After all... If the Lord wants it that way, then that's the way it'll have to be. I can see through you, Gramps. If... Well, if only they don't take you away. I don't care about my eyes so much as I do about losing you. They can't take you away from me. Nobody loves me like you do and takes care of me like you do. Don't... Don't let them take us apart, please, Gramps. Now, now, don't worry about that. I've talked with the Lord, and he's told me that everything's going to be all right. What you've got to do is rest so the other eye don't go bad. You know, maybe the doctor can transplant one of my eyes, and then you can see all right Uh, again. No, you can't do that, Gramps. I wouldn't let you. Who'd read the Bible to me and make Jesus so real? Why, you're my eyes, Gramps. Oh, that's all right. Now you rest. Your Honor, I would like to read a statement from the doctor to the court. Proceed. Tommy Woodruff's eye condition was precipitated by abnormally high emotional and nervous strain. It appears that there will be no improvement unless the boy is relieved of this intense emotional pressure. That's all I have, Your Honor. Your Honor, may I speak? Yes, Mrs. Bixby. I'm a foolish old woman, and I want to say in front of these people that I shall be forever shamed of my sins. And my deepest prayer is that God will forgive me. And to show my sincere sorrow for my error, should he need it, I'm going to offer one of my eyes to be transplanted to Tommy. You realize that you've just made a commitment and promise in front of all these people. You haven't any choice now but to give the lad one of your eyes or offend all of society and God. This is a serious and solemn pledge. I'm aware of all these things, Your Honor. This is my way of repaying a debt to a certain boy who taught me the greatest lesson in love I've ever had. And that's our story for today, boys and girls. See you next week when there'll be more adventure with... 